All right. Shalom, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher, and we're going to talk about this table right here in just a few moments, something that was found many years ago. It's been worked on by many different code searchers. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to show you this. And, uh, you know, I'm a little late to the game because I've been busy, you guys, uh, trying to pay my bills. And um, this has been going on. Warships conducting missile exercises near Cuba, which is just 90 miles off of the Florida coast. So this fleet expected to leave today. In response, though, the U.S. has sent warships to closely monitor this situation. But here's a question. Does this show of Russian force so close to our shoreline signal a new era in the Cold War? Well, I spoke exclusively with a former lieutenant general and admiral for answers. Russian missiles are fired in what's being touted as a routine training exercise. But this fleet of Russian warships docked in Cuba hasn't been this close to the Florida coast in years. Welcome to the new Cold War. This is the reality of the day. Former Lieutenant General Russell Honore says this show of Russian force is also psychological. I think they're sending a clear message that they're engaged and they got the capacity to come to our shoreline with missiles and ships that can fire on the United States property. By the way, you guys, a Russian military has a policy of to always be in a, a state of war and a force of readiness. So they don't bring ships with no rock, with no uh, missiles. Um, this, this submarine is undoubtedly loaded with nuclear missile. No question. Uh, with very little warning, and that's the scary part, because the warning time could be very short. How quickly could it get to our shores? A uh, matter of minutes, matter of minutes. We, of course, take it seriously. The problem with this is there's no response. Um, there's no response that we could do uh, to counter that. And it would only take a few minutes, you guys, to hit a couple of, of cities. And and I think based on what I'm seeing in um, the codes, and I'm just an analyst, okay, that that's... That's all I'm bringing to the table here. And I've scrutinized this table for many years, as well as many rabbis and other code searchers. This is the uh, very Michael Drazen table, the atomic Holocaust, obviously uh, World War III. And uh, it's been looked at over and over again. I think I found some additional things that, that kind of concern me based on what we've seen here in the past few days, what's happening right now in my backyard. Uh, literally here in Miami, run off the coastline here. But uh, these exercises don't pose a threat to the United States. It's no secret this Russian fleet has brought along with it a nuclear-powered submarine. Now that submarine is lethal and dangerous. It has 10 torpedo tubes, 10 missile tubes, it can launch caliber, and it can also launch the Zircon hypersonic missile. The missile goes six to nine times the speed of sound. Despite this arsenal, former Navy Admiral James Fogo says South Florida shouldn't be worried. The Russians have denied that there's any nuclear weapons on board. I don't know if I believe that. Uh, the U.S. government certainly doesn't think so. And uh, at this time, I think it's uh, a peacetime training operation. No worries there. This is not really their policy, you guys. Um, they don't, they don't show, listen, can you, can you imagine a gunfighter showing up with no bullets in his gun? You, you think that's logical? That you're going to show up in somebody's backyard with a with a nuclear submarine with no missiles on it. There are missiles on there, and this is not the only one. You guys, there have been several submarines that have been. I've, I've been seeing the videos posted on TikTok from locals here in Miami. Uh, people that go offshore, go fishing, they go to the Bahamas, they do different things, and they've seen submarine and ship activity right off the coast here. So. Um, this is definitely a show of force. I, I agree with the um, with the, the general there, um, who, by the way, is from, if you guys remember, Katrina. That's the general from um, the Louisiana uh, National Guard. Uh, anyway, um, I agree with him in, in his observation there. And I, I would add to this, I don't think this submarine is the only one. This is the one we're being allowed to see, because this is very much like uh, the Vanty Roosters, when they like to flex their feathers and they like to, you know, uh, kind of show out a little bit, they're they're showing uh, it's a show of force. 
is what it is. Um, I would be more concerned about the ones we do not see, which I guarantee you're off both coasts, is the East Coast and the West Coast. And uh, and, and I think what we're seeing from uh, some of the video of Putin's trip to um, China and to Asia, and um, if, if you recall before we went to the Gulf War, um, the Bush administration did something very similar, right? Uh, gathering forces up and getting a coalition of the willing, right? Imagine that with, with uh, Putin. That's the same thing that's going on when, when we see him over there with the, the North Korean dictator and um, the Chinese um, president, uh, prime minister, whatever he is. It's a coalition of the willing. What are they going to do? Well, can I, imagine this. How old is the United States? The United States is barely just a few hundred years old. China is uh, a few thousand, and Russia at, at least uh, more than a thousand, right? So they've been around a long time. And, and what do they see? What do all the countries see in the world? They see this young country that goes around. Imagine a little child running around uh, at a family reunion, just just wreaking havoc, breaking things, jumping on tables, starting conflicts with other cousins and, you know, doing a lot of things. And, he, and after a while, what happens? Well, one of the older elders comes in and they start giving out smacks, right? Got to smack them and get them in line, right? You see where I'm leading with this? I want you to see this really good uh, presentation from uh, Clayton Norris from Redacted, one of my favorite YouTube channels. Uh, I want to share a little bit from uh, what he just said just a few minutes ago that I think is very relevant. Right before I show you what I have in the codes here, let's look and see what uh, Clayton has to say over at Redacted. Attention, because Vladimir Putin has just issued what can only be described as a chilling warning involving nuclear weapons, global world order, and NATO's continued provocation. Oh, and that NATO lie that Russia launched an unprovoked war against Ukraine. Yeah, that lie is now crumbling right before our eyes. We've got a few big stories that are unfolding this weekend that I want to bring to you. So while Russia had nuclear submarines off the Florida coast this week and Putin was laying out a nuclear policy with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, the White House was busy doing important work for Pride Month, inviting men in dresses to stage fake press conferences in the White House press briefing room. JVN, oh, yes. Yes. is it true that is all your natural hair? <laughs> yes. Obviously, this is satire. I can confirm that this is not a wig. Follow-up question, so do you no use extension. your own products? So now you know why the world doesn't take us seriously anymore. But over to someone who people are taking seriously, and that's Vladimir Putin right now. So Asia rolled out the red carpet for Putin this week during his Asia tour, which included stops in North Korea, Vietnam. And this is what I mean right here, you guys. He's going around getting a coalition of the willing, uh, a willing so to speak. And setting the stage for what may happen down the road. And, I, and you know, uh, I know we live in a world of speculation, but uh, we also live in a world of probabilities and statistics. And what we're looking at in the codes seem to indicate we have a high probability, high probability of there being a world war. And America is the stage of that, uh, so to speak, because uh, it is the target of those trying to bring younger brother or, or, or younger sibling back into order, okay? Everybody follow what I'm saying? America's got a lot of enemies. Hear what I'm saying. America's got a lot of enemies across the world, and they're a little fed up. And when they see what's going on in our politics, and you guys, it's embarrassing. We, we, we are at the weakest we have ever been, ever in our history. And they see what's going on and they see the policies. And we're talking about very old cultures here. Russia and China are very old cultures. They've been around a long time. America's only been around a few hundred years, right? You see what I'm saying? There, there's a sense of pride and a sense of, uh, you, you know, uh, of, of, I don't I want to say ownership, um, but uh, responsibility, right? So here we go. We're, we're in this thing uh, where we, we basically have uh, a government that's a puppet government, and uh, the times are very dangerous. We got nuclear submarines off both coasts. This is not just off the East Coast. When I was in Hawaii, uh, there were Chinese and Russian ships just off the coast there, always doing training and, and exercise. And by the way, Russia, uh, uh, China in particular, has been practicing amphibious assault 
amphibious landings for many years. Why would they want to do that? Who do they want to invade? That's an invasion tactic. That's an invasion. Who would they want to do that with? And where? West Coast would be a good place for amphibious vehicles to come in, right? So uh, there is a definite threat, you guys. This, this, there's no, no question. We, we need to pay attention to this. This is biblical. Putin dropped a bombshell, both metaphorically and potentially literally. He called out NATO, citing recent escalations and threats. He's signaling a potential change to Russia's nuclear deterrence policy. And he said defeat in Ukraine would mean the end of Russia. A defeat in Ukraine would mean the end of Russia. So that's not going to happen despite what NATO thinks. I think Zelensky and his friends will obviously know when there are Russian tanks in Kiev. Uh, I'm afraid that's what it's probably going to take. And I think Mr. Putin has figured that out. And I sense that something really big is coming. This is a major change to their nuclear policy. So now Russia will not just use nukes in response to nukes if they're attacked, but also if there's a threat to the existence of Russia itself. So what's exceedingly chilling about Which brings up a good point, because if we're fighting a proxy war against Russia, uh, and that being America, when I say we, um, a proxy war in another country and, and everybody knows, all the players know who is involved in this game, right? There's no, it's it's no question. We're funding it. We're, we're putting weapons in there. So we're fighting basically a proxy war in Ukraine, sacrificing the people of Ukraine and uh, the Russian soldiers that come in there to just to, to fight Russia. That may be term, determine a threat to russia at some point and what do you think would happen when they determine that what, what do you think some people cannot imagine the things that may be coming on to the united states very soon about that is that putin is combining rhetoric with a very tangible show of military support he's not just blathering on and on and making statements that he's not backing up no he's putting in place a russian nuclear triad which is a strategic defense mechanism that consists of intercontinental ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, and bombers. This is not just a hollow threat, guys. The nuclear triad, by the way, is crucial for maintaining a balance of power in the world, and it's something only a few nations, including the United States, actually possess. So take a look at this map. This is really interesting. This shows what countries have nuclear triad capabilities right now. And when you look at this, what does this mean in practical terms? Well, it shows Russia's readiness to elevate its strategic deterrence to any perceived existential threats. And as Putin sternly noted when he was in Vietnam, this involves not just theoretical capabilities, but actual deployment of advanced systems across the world. This is why Putin's comments this week are so worrying, particularly for NATO. He told the press that Russia's nuclear forces are constantly in a state of combat readiness bolstered by recent agreements with nations like North Korea. You know what constant state of combat readiness means? That means they don't show up to the game with empty guns. They show up locked and loaded, you guys. So the, the ship, the, the ships and uh, the nuclear sub right off the coast of, of Florida down in Cuba has missiles on it. There's no question about it. No question. Yeah. Now let's discuss NATO as a piece of this. So Putin's rhetoric isn't happening in a vacuum. There are specific provocations by NATO that will lead us to war. Nigel Farage this week let the cat out of the bag. The West brought war to Ukraine. It's NATO's fault that Putin invaded Ukraine. And he said this back in 2014 on the floor of parliament. Uh, just to make that worse, of course, some NATO members said they, they, they too would like the Ukraine to join NATO. We directly encouraged the uprising in the Ukraine that led to the toppling of the president Yanukovych and that led of course in turn to Vladimir Putin reacting and the moral of the story is if you poke the Russian bear with a stick don't be surprised when he reacts so that was 2014 after the coup in Ukraine and he's warning us again that Putin doesn't bluff keep poking the bear and we are going to be facing World War III I stood up in the European Parliament in 2014 and I said, and I quote, there will be a war in Ukraine. 
Why did I say that? It was obvious to me that the ever eastward expansion of NATO and the European Union was giving this man a reason to his Russian people to say they're coming for us again and to go to war. And during his talks, Putin pointed to NATO's activities as threats not only in Europe, but now even in the Asia-Pacific region. He said this while he was in North Korea, and he said this while he was in Vietnam. Antiwar.com reports that he accused NATO of threatening security in Asia for Russia and other nations, making a deeply interconnected argument that any NATO action globally is a potential threat to Russian security anywhere. So this, guys, is a huge departure. And now NATO is not ignoring Putin's message. Putin must not win. That would show that aggression works and force is rewarded. It will be dangerous for our own security and for the whole world. So we must sustain and step up our support for Ukraine. So now NATO is responding to Putin's response, to their response. You see how this goes, this escalation? So when Putin uses the word existential, an existential threat, he means a threat to the very existence of something. In this case, a threat to the existence of Russia. The threat to Russia's existence is NATO, walking right up to their doorstep. You guys ever seen the map of what NATO looks like to the Russian bear? Let's take a look. Now, a few weeks ago, NATO posted a tweet saying, we never made a deal with Russia. We never told them that we wouldn't expand. We never put that in writing. We're a defensive organization that is totally peaceful, and we have every right to expand. I'm going to show a map well, That, of course, was an absolute lie, and now we have confirmation that it's a lie. Newly unearthed documents from the year 1990 from then U.S. Secretary of State James Baker. Fast I'm take you NATO up to the place where, um, where we are and how this all progressed, okay? So the blue would be NATO members, right? And and red is Russia, obviously. Uh, but, but take a look, look at it. Has marched. Here. Not only has NATO expanded, but they've quite literally... So notice that we've gone through several administrations. That's going to play a role here because you're going to see multiple presidents' name in the table that we've been looking at because this has been building over years, Okay, this very event that leads up to this atomic holocaust. And I do believe that there will be an exchange of nuclear weapons at some point. However, I do believe it also is a limited exchange. Literally surrounded Russia. This is not going to end well. Now we need to look at the North Korean piece of this. And it's often overlooked how deep these alliances are. Putin's recent pact with Kim Jong-un ran... Also really significant in this table that was found years ago, the presence of Korea in here. Amps up the stakes even further. And this isn't, guys, just some... China also plays a huge role. So does Iran. So Iran, China, Russia, North Korea is who we're talking about here. Posturing here. This agreement strengthens military ties, nuclear energy ties, sending uranium to... And with all those countries, you guys, you got well over a 200 million man army. North Korea, and could even see advanced weapons systems in Pyongyang, a direct counterbalance to the United States presence in South Korea. And by the way, Putin threatened South Korea this past week. Putin warned South Korea that arms deliveries to Ukraine would be a quote, very big mistake and that Russia, quote, reserves the right to supply weapons to other regions in response, meaning that if the West arms Ukraine, Russia arms North Korea, and you'd be making a huge mistake if this happens. He basically said, don't try it, I'm not bluffing. We're at a very perilous precipice right now. Putin's warnings cannot and should not be dismissed. He's aligning military might with strategic partnerships and has set clear red lines that NATO and the West cannot afford to ignore. They can't afford to ignore these signals or misrepresent. And I agree, guys. And I've been seeing report after report after with with all the different pundits, you guys. And uh, well, you know, here, here's some videos that I've, I I caught this past couple of weeks while I was working in West Palm Beach uh, from TikTokers all over Florida, um, posting videos of what they were seeing, and uh, we'd you know, like here's one. Now, I kind of believe this is an American uh, submarine just by its profile there. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. If you look at that con tower there, it's more of a squared con tower. 
uh, which is a little different than the Russian ships. If you look now at this Russian ship here, from the US it has Navy. more of a just one day uh, aerodynamic a Russian sub showed up um, in Cuba. The U.S. Southern Command announced that it's fast profile to it, as you can see there, more uh, streamlined. Marine, the USS Helena arrived in Guantanamo Bay. Now that in right there. Now that is an American submarine that has arrived in uh, it's the it's the Helena that's arrived in Guantanamo Bay. So um, you can guarantee there are more than one submarine out uh, at, on both sides um, that are tracking one another. Announcement itself is unusual. The nuclear powered sub is part of the Navy's so-called silent service, something that's typically kept a secret. So the fact that they're letting you see that is a show of force. And uh, here, here's a video of uh, Putin threatening NATO with I World War III. NATO being a strong term in this table you're about to see. So in other words, what he's saying there, uh, you, you, the actions of NATO is going to provoke an all-out um, world war because he knows who is puppeting, puppeteering um, the NATO countries, and that would be the United States. We're trying to put nuclear weapons in Poland? Really? <laughs> you think that's going to go well? No, not at all. Not at all. They're going to put them right off our coast. This is very serious, you guys. Here's another report. Yeah, but 100 miles from Florida tonight, four Russian warships steaming into Havana Bay, including a nuclear-powered submarine. The U.S. tracking this with a show of force. They are set for military drills, these Russian ships, with Cuba for the first time in 16 years. ABC's Martha Raddatz reporting tonight. Tonight, a brazen display of Russian military force just over 100 miles from Florida's coast. Russia's longtime ally, Cuba, welcoming four Russian warships, including a nuclear-powered submarine with a 21-cannon salute. As Russian military drills begin in the Caribbean nation for the first time in 16 years. The Russians say the ships have already conducted drills in the Atlantic, simulating long-range missile strikes aimed at targets more than 300 miles away. Although Russian ships routinely dock in... So targeting targeting targets more than 300 miles away. So, so Cuba is only 90 miles away from Miami. So imagine 300 miles in uh, how, what, what could be reached. And first of all, if there's... There's going to be a, a submarine engagement. Um, East Coast, Gulf Coast, and West Coast would be where the attacks would come from. And uh, I think the main two are East and West Coast. I think it's going to be a limited strike. And the reason I say that, because the same thing happened in World War II. Uh, there's a biblical concept called Midah, Kenegad Midah, measure for measure. We dropped two nuclear weapons on Japan. And I think the same is going to happen to the United States. And here is a table <clears throat> that I've been looking at for years that leads me to believe that. Now, I'm not the original code searcher that found this. Michael Grosin is. But everybody I know that who, who does codes at some point has worked on this table. And this is Atomic Holocaust. It is only found one time in, uh, in, in, in the scripture. And where it's found is up in the Torah. But uh, a really interesting thing here is you can find all kinds of uh, modern names of countries, things like submarine and, uh, you know, Obama, war, China, um, Iran, United States, Russia. All those are right here in a, in a very small clustered area. Um, this actually has a row skip on it. And with this row skip, the, the width is only 1044, which means this is a very, very small area um, where this happens to be. Now, um, this has been of some interest to rabbis for several years since Michael Drawson posted this. So uh, obviously it's never happened. We've never had this to, to take place, but there are some really interesting things, especially this clustering of anomaly uh of, of words that that happens to come together right here because we were just talking about nato and um america you know but you know what wasn't said in those some of those clips was the fact that israel also plays a, a role 
because this is America's um, A1A. Our, um, you know, little sister over there is, um, she is sometimes lovingly referred to, right? Um, it's all here clustered up. And not only that, we, there's, you know, FEMA camps here, which, you know, if there's an, if there's a strike in the United States and it's limited, there's going to be camps uh, because people are going to be devastated and, and uh, you know, in, interior uh, infrastructure is going to be disturbed and, um, you know, goods and services are going to come to a halt and things like that. So they're going to be FEMA camps. That's why it's there. Uh, and it's always been there. But, uh, and, you know, a few other things. Um, I want to show you the very same table, very same one. I pulled it back out and reworked it to look at some more modern things because as you could have seen um, there in that PDF, the, the last time I originally worked this was somewhere around 2016. So it's been several years now. Here is that same um, access term. As you can see, it's a width of 1044. And here is our term. Now, some of the, some of the interesting things about this to me is one, is it almost seems like this is painting a map to me, like uh, we have an East Coast, West Coast kind of things, and, and this whole thing is represented to the United States. Um, even though uh, I believe the spark of this whole thing is going to take place in Ukraine, and that's a whole other, uh, you know, um, code table to look at for this one, which has the United States all over this. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the word America is nearly in the same skip pattern as the access term, right next to it, as you see there in the white. That's America. And it comes together with Israel. And then you have NATO that crosses over it. And then in the black, that is the judgments. So you have all this clustering right here. Now, Obama is also here. Bush is here. This thing goes way back, as we saw in Clayton's um, uh, demonstration about NATO and the movement of NATO. And, and that, that spanned several administrations. So here we are in Biden's. And here it is, Biden. And Trump is here. But but Trump has uh, more of um, hands-on, so to speak representation in this table is is his the 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 tet in his name the t in other words right here right next to this clustering and moving this way is his name trump so it has a direct connection to the access term which uh, and going to the election and all that kind of stuff uh you know that's another Another video that we got to do and where I possibly changed my stance on, you know, how the election is going to go down. Uh, and, and here's the thing about that, you guys, you, it's called um, Monte Carlo method. You have to explore all of the possibilities. So it's about probability of each one of those. So, um, you know, your, your position may change at some point. But anyway, it looks like he plays a hands on role in whatever this event is. So it's it's highly likely that he could possibly be in. Uh, elected again if they don't kill him first. That's another caveat to that whole scenario. Anyway, um, America's here. Also, um, the word for United States in the blue, but then also in the red, in the same line, is Russia. But you also have the word war, and, and what's going on in this particular place here is a battle between families and nations. That is taking place right there. We have uh, the word Olami, which means the whole world in white that comes right here. Melhama, which is war, is here a few times in the plain text. So this, this, all this text right here, and it's basically this very small area, you guys, at ten forty four. So it's it's a continuation of war and battle all through the middle part of where this access term is, right? Because you can see wars mentioned in these areas that, that are, it's all in this area right here, right? Um, Miami, 
Now, that's another thing that wasn't in the, the table before is we had no idea there would be a location. Um, and, and Cuba is also here. Cuba, Miami in, in uh, the darker color, but also Zalot. Zalot is submarines. Is here and also here connecting with the world uh, uh, war. Melchem, the same as, as up here, war, connecting with submarines. Interesting the positioning of this. So imagine this as the east coast of the United States here. What, where is this with the war and the submarine? What, what position is this one? That's down in Cuba, right where it says Cuba, right? So I, I started seeing this pic pictograph kind of map thing uh, up here with this whole, this whole table, especially when you look at all information at the same time, because it, this is scaled back. I redid this so, so it wasn't so confusing, okay? China's in here, Iran, things like that, but also words like ambushed. Ambushed coming here as an abacus effect, but also here as an ELS, connecting to the very same line where Russia and the United States is in the same line where a war is going on. Same, Miami is also encoded there. Miami's encoded here, it's here three times in, in one line. So it seems to me like it plays a role. Uh, I don't know if it's because of what we're seeing now uh, or what, but uh, it's definitely there. And I'm sure other cities in the United States are there as well, but you know, because it's, this is my back door, I'm looking for Miami and lo and behold, there it is. The United States is also here, but also in the time of tribulation, in a time of distress, now, I understand that some people don't want to, you know, they don't want to think about that. Well, we might be in the, we don't want, we're not in the, in the tribulation yet. This is, this is the birth pains or anything but the tribulation. You guys, how much worse does it have to get before we start saying, okay, this might be tribulation, right? We, we've seen plagues already start, right? And war and, and the signs in the sun, moon and stars have told us these things are going to happen. Right here we are. We've got the end of days up here at the top, a uh, hayamin, which is the end of days as a banner at the top. And this is the very same verse that has Nibiru encoded there. Okay, this is where um, Balaam prophesies and sees a star coming out of Jacob. Right, um, it's the return of the Messiah. Um, that's what's taking place up there. Uh, what I've got highlighted here was kind of interesting to me. It's also highlighted in the original um, that I worked. And it's what it, it's actually pretty profound if you see what's taking place here. Let's read that together and I'll wrap this up. You guys, please um, share this video. If you don't mind, help me get the word out uh, about the codes. If you'd like to be a student, if you'd like to uh, learn how to search codes, please contact me with the email that's down below. All right, so we're in, I believe this is um, Devarim, the fourth chapter, 25th. Let's back up. Furthermore, the Adonai was angry with me for your sakes, and I swear that I should not go over the joy, but I should not go in, into that good land which the Adonai, the Elohim, gave a thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land, and I must not go over Jordan and possess the good land. And take heed to yourself, lest you forget the covenant of Yahuwah, your Elohim, which made he made with you and and make you a graven image or any likeness of anything which you, uh, uh, the Adonai Elohim has forbidden thee. For the Adonai uh, uh, is the Elohim is a consuming fire. He's in a, even a jealous Elohim. When thou shalt beget children, the children's children, and ye shall remain a long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves and make graven images and likenesses of anything and do, shall do evil in the sight of the of the Elohim to provoke him to anger. I will call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that ye shall utterly perish from off the land where ye go over Jordan to possess it. And ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Right here's where we really need to to um, pay attention because it gives a benchmark in time. Another end of days here. It says, "When thou art in tribulation, listen to me. 
and these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to Yah, your Elohim, and shall be obedient to his voice, for he is a merciful for Elohim. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, neither forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. For ask ye now, and for the days are in past, which were before thee, since the day that, El, that Yah created man upon the earth, and asked from one side of heaven unto the other, which he had done, which hath been any such thing as this great thing, or hath been heard like it? Or did ever a people hear the voice of Elohim speaking out of the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard and will? Now Elohim has said to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs and wonders, and by war, by mighty hand, and an outstretched arm, and the great terrors, according to your Adonai, your Elohim, for or did for you in Egypt before your eyes. I'm sorry, you guys have kind of hard time seeing them with these glasses here. Anyway, um, World War III. And um, there's a lot more information here. A couple of peculiar things. Um, the fact that, that Trump's name is connected to it. Now, that's that's kind of peculiar to, to me because I, I, I can't really say 100% that he's going to be president again, right? Because there's the other things that we have to calculate in this, this the shenanigans. Uh, it's undoubtedly going to be a shit show, this next president election, you, no doubt. And so uh, it's no telling what they're going to pull. And I wouldn't be surprised if they if they did something as egregious as last time, you guys. So anyway, uh, there it is right there. Korea, I don't, I don't know if I mentioned that, Korea, right here in the middle of it. Korea. The date. In the blue here, um, hey, Tav Shen Pei Hei, right in the middle of that. that that's another clustering of terms that um, uh, originally the, the date appeared down here, 2016. Now we have this date, which is coming up very close uh, <laughs> this year, right here. Atomic Holocaust, definitely encoded, is still in play, has not happened yet. Is it going to happen? Um, well, you know, it looks like the stage is setting, you guys. Uh, tell me what you think down in the down below with uh, the comments. Give me some feedback on what you think is going to happen. Shalom to you. We'll see you in the next video.